stage. Come to the stage. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Bujo Tutor. I want to ask you about the problem and the rotation. The problem is that, as I just explained, the phenomenon, but if there's a few more in around the container, if the container or terminal are divided for access, you can see that it falls through quadrationally or in opposite direction compared to the container portion. Our better task is to investigate the value of parameters which will straight the direction of the balls. This is my presentation outline for today. This is my experimental setup with e balls in around the container. The orbital motion was driven by self invented orbital shaper with a revolution frequency controlled by a simple optical system. We set up a short system orbital revolution frequency with minimal vibration. To track the movement of the ball, we use backlighting technique to ensure precision as the DC would be over setting. Let, let us take a closer look at the motion of the particle inside the moving container. As you can see, the motion of the particle is translational of the center of mass and the rotational about the center of mass. We can look at the motion of this particle in three frame of reference, the lab frame, the container frame, which is a frame that is moving with the center of mass of the container, and the end frame, which actually also rotates with the container. The reason we need a frame of reference is that we can study the rotational motion without worrying about translational motion. From such observation, we found that the balls exhibit four types of behavior. This may go to the balls is perfectly on the container wall. You may observe this in the container frame as the center of mass of the ball will be the same level velocity as the container, but in a frame, the center of mass is stationary. However, for further behavior, um, for, to explain further behavior, quantitative observation must take place, must, must take place to help us explain this phenomenon. To analyze the motion of the cluster, we use two formulas to find the motion of the center of mass and to find out the angular velocity of the cluster, we can assume the angular velocity of each particle about the centers, uh, cluster center of mass and aberration. This quantity uh, computes the rate of change of the angular position about the center of mass of each particle. With this measurement, we quantitatively observe the cluster angular velocity and found that the co-rotation mode, that for the rotation mode, the ball finally stick at the container wall. Therefore, co-rotate with the container. For stall, for stall and total rotation mode, the ball stops sitting at the container wall and therefore rotate in another direction. However, the total rotation of ball will only occur when the number of ball exceeds a certain value. How should we explain this phenomenon? Six, this is purely mechanical phenomenon. We should be able to understand this behavior using the toilet mechanic. By assuming that there is no friction between the particle and the bottom of the container, the only forces acting on the particle must, due to, must be due to the particle collision with the wall and with the neighboring particle. Okay, for each attack, there are no more due to the contact between the particle and the tangential force is that of block finding friction. I want you to keep in mind that the tangential force only presents when there is slipping between surfaces. Hence, if there is no slipping, the tangential friction disappears. Let me remind you of what no slipping on the surface means. In our situation, the ball motion process is not translational and the rotation of the pollen, which is going to make a rolling motion. The difference between the velocity of the moving surface to the contact velocity is the ball relative velocity. If the ball rolls without slipping, the velocity of the ball at the contact point must be the same velocity at which the surface is moving. Hence, if we calculate the relative velocity at the contact point, the velocity we can still up with that is no slipping. Now, observe our situation again from the left frame. We can see that the ball motion at the contact point has the opposite direction compared to the surface motion. I want you to remember this carefully, since this also will play a big role in our further explanation. To describe the change in ball motion with a kinematic analysis for the particle and container interaction. For the container, there is no change in linear and ground velocity from the collision, but for the particle, the change in the normal velocity is due to the normal force, the change in the tangential velocity is due to the tangential friction, and the change in the angular velocity is due to the torque. Due to the force of position where the container and the particle is still in contact, the relative velocity changes to the point the particle bounces off the contact point. The relative velocity, if the relative velocity is zero, then our particle will roll not slip on the container wall and vice versa. From the conservation of momentum assuming elastic collision, we can obtain a change in normal velocity. Using the principle of linear momentum and impulse, we can quantify the magnitude of normal impulse. The magnitude of the tangential impulse is determined by the magnitude of the normal impulse to the intermediate chemical friction. To determine the actual tangential impulse experienced by the particle, we must consider the fact that the tangential friction will disappear if no slipping is realized during the source of collision. Therefore, we must compare, we must compare the magnitude of the maximum tangential impulse between the collision oh, and the magnitude 
transition to impose quality stock to the city. The main problem to this impose is the actual energy on the potential impose in the opposite direction in the initial reality velocity. If the initial impulse into the position is sufficient to stop the slipping, the particle will not slip in the opposite direction with excessive potential to velocity on the container. This will store a counter rotation movement. Else, if the tangential impulse of the position is insufficient, the particle will not slip in its initial direction, since there will be tangential friction of 40% when the relative velocity is not zero. Therefore, the ball must move in the same direction as the container. To test our hypothesis, we provided a situation of an impulse very high wall friction. Remember the potential impulse always sufficient to stop the slipping. You can see that a 2D circular particle can exhibit counter rotation behavior. With the same type of particle used in the minimum model experiment, we conclude that the particle container friction is a key explanation to the change in ball direction. However, in our initial experiment, it seems like the particle container friction is unlikely to be sufficient. This is why the product is struggled to add bubble into the container. This is because as the pace of bubble, the counter rotation motion emerges. But, uh, oh sorry, and if you observe it carefully, you can see a solid light and a fluid light region of the cluster. In the solid light region, the particle moves in a concentrated manner. We can also get this region as a single particle with an effective friction. The effective friction emerges from one point into the middle of this particle friction and plays a role to stop the slipping from the bottom of the wall. Okay. Hence, with sufficient effective friction of the cluster, counter rotation will then occur. I want to remind you that the effective friction is an emergent is an emergent that may property of the cluster, and therefore it is very difficult or even impossible to formulate precise qualitative prediction for this phenomenon. This, this can be proven by observing this phenomenon in the end frame of reference. To prove that there is actually no slipping in M frame, we plot the number of ball against the ratio of the contact velocity to the ball uh, velocity in M frame. When ball slip at the container wall, we observe that the ball at boundary to the station, uh, the ball at boundary um, is to be stationary, hence the ratio is equal to zero. However, when the ball in perfect low slip condition, the ball at boundary will perfectly be in the container, and hence the ratio is equal to one. With the partial slip having the ratio lies in between. For the first experiment, we used a plastic and steel ball with varying size and found that the transition point occurs at different numbers of ball. <coughs> However, if we plot the same experimental data using the packing fraction as our x axis, we found that all the transition points earlier are occurring at roughly the same place. However, for the steel ball, it requires less packing fraction to make a transition to total rotation. We will be discussing about this later. We also did a similar experiment and analysis with the glass ball. We found that the packing pressure required to cause the transition for the glass ball is less than the seal. If we look at every type of ball altogether, we see that the higher value of interparticle and ball friction, the less than the packing pressure required to transit from core rotation to counter rotation. Since the critical packing pressure depends on the parameter and wall friction, it would take a much trivial theory to make a precise prediction of this critical point. Now, let's an investigate experimentally a little bit deeper into the role of the wall friction. By varying the correct type of wall, we find that the greater the wall friction, the lesser the number of wall is required to transfer from core rotation to counter rotation. These, support our, uh, these experiments support our earlier explanation that when you have high enough friction, um, you can cause a particle to roll enough slip and therefore counter rotate. To verify our speculation about the effective friction, we have a process of experiment with a combination of different particular <coughs> walls and particles. The particle friction coefficient will obtain from the treasure we call the manufacture of manufacturing information. The wall friction coefficient will obtain by the time plane experiment. If we replace, so when we left back, if we, if we replace the um, smoother particle and smoother container with rougher particle and rougher container, intuitively, this should be showing higher effective friction. This means that the transition point from the core rotation to the rotation should occur earlier than the smoother particle and smoother container. Indeed, this is the case. For the other cases, the transition point should be between these two extremes. This is also what we observe. From this experiment, we can point out that the effective friction and wall friction will greatly influence what we are seeing from the cluster. So, all of our experiment investigation reveals the important role of friction. But which one is more important? Is it the wall friction or is it the interparticle friction? Emily and her colleague answered this question by carrying out a two dimensional simulation where she can turn on and off the all friction at will. She discovered that, she need, um, that we need both of the wall friction and its interparticle uh, inter friction for this phenomenon to occur. 
Another question that I want to address here is that can we use this simulation to make an experimental result? I think the answer is unlikely since the simulation for what can be is two dimensional and to map the experimental parameter to be treated to two dimensional is a non trivial task. Moreover, if we can perform two simulations, we will not produce any further insight about the transition from polarization to the rotation, other than the fact that more friction and the particle friction are important if we get particular amount of water. To the last part, to investigate the continent parameter which governs the orbital motion and the physics of the rotating frames necessary. Let me state this clearly. Fictitious force is not the root cause of this phenomenon because how comes a border axis is a non inertial frame refer reference frame would have any effect in the behavior that we can see in the initial frame. However, some behavior we observe in the initial frame may be easier to explain using fictitious force. For example, you can explain the ball movement in the frame using fictitious force key. In this experiment, we carry out the orbital frequency and observe that the greater orbital frequency, and also that for the greater orbital frequency, the lesser number of balls is needed to cause transition. This could be explained can use oh sorry. Um, this could be explained using the constant oxygen field report, where the burning frequency is large, the ball can push outwards longer, and more normal for the upper ball and more and more friction exerted. We also ran the orbital amplitude and found a similar trend for the cost. It also explained the same way using the center. And therefore, um, we found that increasing the ratio of the total uh, amplitude to result in um, the lesser number of ball required. In for the conclusion, I'm going to summarize my answer for the problem surface. I just explain, I just explain the phenomenon and validate my hypothesis that the constant direction movement occurs when the ball rolls out state. This duration requires sufficient initial impulse, which also means that the ball friction can also be sufficient. However, if the ball friction allows this insufficient, the phenomenon can still occur in the regular number of the first number of ball increasing. So this is a parameter um, I investigate to uh, this um, report. Uh, this is a reference citation to our presentation. Thank you for listening.
I think I think they have that is the one. Quantitative predictions and maybe how it's connected to the quality part 
which was before, so that it might be the, the third decision topic. And even at the beginning, they was mentioned some, some end frame, and then we saw that the balls were thinking, let's say, let's say differently there. And to me, it was not that clear if I look at the phenomena, what is the end frame, how does it move with the container with the balls, and what exactly does it mean to the system and maybe to the, to the experiments. So, so even that, that would be the, like, the thought. Um, this issue topic. Uh, also, in some parts, it was unclear what simulation, what experiments, what came from what, uh, but I'm happy that especially this part was, was clarified a bit uh, in, the, in the questions. Um, yeah, and overall, maybe I can hear some nice points that different frames were, were tried to be investigated, which in my opinion, especially in this problem where those pictures were to occur. Uh, quite a um, good, let's say, way how to explain it. However, it needs to be shown clearly what this this M frame, what frame, what frame was over there. Okay, right now let's move to the to the discussion part. Please like in the presentation if possible. And let's let's uh, start with the really positive explanation. What really causes what really causes the the rotation and kind of rotation? Sorry, can I clarify something about the um yeah, yeah, first point, first explanation. Sorry, um, the first one here about the uh, the quantitative prediction of the theoretical model. I believe I have stated in my report that it is very hard, and actually, you wouldn't be a, it is okay. possible to precisely fit it. Uh, yeah, fitting parameters. I I absolutely understand it. Uh, however, even though it's still discussion, we can move to it right now. Uh, we saw some nice equations, and if you have some equations in the in the report, I will explain it like that you want to present some kind of conclusion of what they told us. Right. So I would like to see this conclusion and maybe oh, let's right. put some emphasis on it. Mm -hmm. So this is what we got from the equations. Right. And this is what was I think you are misunderstanding the use of my theory. I'm not using the theory to try to predict the, what is going on inside the container, but instead I'm using the normal physics, like the standard physics of elastic condition to explain the condition. Like like number 17 or something like that. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure about number, number 17. That. Yeah, for example, for example, right. here, yes. what, what do those, those um, cause for that? I'm trying to explain about how, how rolling without slip work on a moving surface. This is, a, this is a mathematical interpretation that explains this phenomenon physically. So I'm just trying to point it out, like, what, under what circumstance or under what velocity quantity is required for this condition to occur. Okay, yes, so I'm this is connected to the part with slip and no slip conditions. Yes, but I'm not okay. using it to predict the number of critical conditions. Thank you. And what what exactly uh, slips and not slips like the ball or the, oh. the ball on the wall? Yes, the ball on the wall. The ball on the wall. Yes. Okay. And, and the fact that it slips or not? Mm -hmm. okay. Mind, mind okay. Mind. Uh, I think I saw a graph where was some kind of green points and the blue points, and they kind of interpret each other. It was like kind of uh, actually, yeah, exactly. Oh. And yes. they connected this with slip and not slip conditions, right? Exactly. Okay, so maybe we can connect this to your qualitative explanation using slip and nose conditions yes. and give some insights to why do those curves behave like that. Oh, because like for, um, for the right hand side, this part represents the fact that, that um, first the, the normalized the angular velocity for the state correct rotation, you can see it has a positive value, therefore it is um, co rotating, and also for the negative value, it is co rotating. That is the explanation for the yeah, I see the negative values. I said it, it might be a little bit confusing. I'm trying to clarify at this point. So, um, as you can see, that right, right, slipping in the M frame that you are on, the perfect thing, you can see that the, the center of mass of the cluster just stay at the same position relatively throughout the uh, throughout the experiment, and therefore that that uh, that results in the zero value for the um. For the okay, thank you. I think I might get some part of it, right. but I'm not really sure why now when I'm looking at the images. Uh -huh. uh, there's mm -hmm. rolling with slip and perfect and no slip, and I can't really see the difference in the images. Um, so maybe, maybe you can make that to the graph. I can explain it to you. Um, if you look at the rolling with slip, you can see that the ball rotates slower, right? It means that okay. you have a component of slipping and also a component of Okay, the fact that it rotates slower means it has component of slipping? Yes, it has a component of slipping. Meanwhile, if there is a per perfect no slip, you can see that, like, I, I mean, it is my fault to not like, um, show the rotating motion of the container. 
what you will be designing here, if you look at the phenomena itself, so with the crack rotation, it might seem a bit as if the particles as a cluster right. move like, let's say, some kind of a big solid disk. As if they here was oh, yes, yes, yes. a solid disk. Okay. Do you agree that this kind of movement can be described like that? I mean, it's... Like, just the imagine exactly, what happens. Not exactly, because as I stated in the earlier slide, can you please get back to my one slide? Okay, another one. As you can see, I have pointed out that like only some part act like this because yeah, yeah, I agree with like Yeah, and I just quickly this right? part I wanted to make it connected to the filling ratio because as you could see at the slide it was there before. Right. Uh, with ah, the, I your point. So with the, with the, 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 as you at this point, like maybe I, I, I should point out about the two and the relationship. No, I don't need to point out it. I just meant that uh, when, uh -huh. the, when there was rotation, right. we clearly saw less balls, and with the contradiction, we saw more balls. So okay. maybe it would be interesting to connect this filling ratio with the slip and loss conditions because the filling ratio might be a bit, let's say, more intuitive to understand. And like like okay. that, we, we, we could connect it. I, I'm just, okay. uh, I'm just following the, um, the most clear way to interpret the award. So I, I just okay, 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 see. Just, just yeah. I mean, the, the, imagine with so many errors where, where, this, where this chaotic and with the filling ratio and so you can right. so I think it might be, might be more clear. Okay, uh, right now, let's move to whether maybe look right. one more time to those, those forces and velocities. Okay, here, there's right. okay, this is like angle of the, the, of the container, and right. maybe this type of shortly, uh, what is the source of, of each source, because it might be some wall interaction, some ball wall interaction, and all these should pose this rotation and conservation. Maybe we can come in and describe the forces right, a bit more. Right, right, right. Like quite more, quite major So I think the law of gliding, the component of the force will be dissected into two parts, the tangential force and the normal force, right? So yeah, the tangential force is the movement and the normal that pushes the wall. Yes, but okay. the thing is, the tangential, the tangential friction is... Cannot see. Okay. Hello? Close, yeah, it's working. Okay, yeah, yeah I can see that. And this, uh, what changes the um, um, direction of the tangent force, which causes the rotation or counter rotation? What changes the direction of the tangent force? Yeah, but the uh, tangent force it, it causes the rotation or counter rotation. It's constrained by the boundary of the wall. Uh, it's constrained by the boundary of the wall. Yeah, so it, it will always be. Yeah, okay, okay. 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 so what of these forces decide okay. whether we observe rotation or counter rotation? What of these forces are velocities? Decides whether you observe rotation or counter rotation. Which? Oh, first, the velocities. Well, they, they should explain right. where, where is rotation, where is counter rotation, and how yes. does this phenomenon occur? Yeah, this is the usual display. Yes. So, what force exactly decides whether it's rotation or counter rotation? And also, the whole picture because it determines the direction. Okay, and what changes the direction? What changes the direction? Like, like it changes the direction if it goes the other way, or? I mean, it, it doesn't actually change the direction. Okay, in that case, it might come to just as well. Sorry. And maybe it might be connected to ball ball interaction, like if oh. there is some ball, it might yes. hit it and as put there some other force, right, right, right. and that will change it. But as they say, that is a um, uh, emergent dynamic property, that what it could be created, and then it could just. I, I'm not asking about an optimal solution, I'm just asking, like, okay, we have a ball, and how much force is this to rotate the ball? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Having two balls in the system is different from having 20 balls in the system. Yeah. Yes, it is a significant So, so the filling ratio is, is important, right? It is important. Okay, okay. Uh, in, in this image, I would really like to see, let's say, how do those ball ball interactions happen? Because in that, that's, that's what causes the, causes the phenomena, and maybe it might clarify those, those errors and losses in the I think that I already clarified that point. Okay, 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 okay thank you. Uh, right now, I would like to move to the, right. to the end frame, maybe show some, show some image. Uh, of open frame, some video maybe when you compare it to the green lab frame. Okay. Oh, we'll this one. So, actually, uh, end frame. Is okay, here is the end frame. Right. You can see that all of the balls rotate in that direction. Uh -huh. yeah? Yes. And how, in that case, from end frame, can you decide where is the rotation, uh, where is rotation, where is time for rotation? Well, as you can see, um, actually the container is rotating around, as I said, in, during the report. Therefore, if the 
pause and you're going to re-rotate at the same angular velocity as the alpha uh, moon. I don't know, at the same contact velocity as the other container, the point is not the same. By the way, in the x you can see that all those are there. Yeah, you can see those are there. Yeah, you can Okay, maybe, maybe let's draw this in frame. So, we have a container, which rotates in some kind of this circle, right? Now, here is the, where, where is the end point? So, I'll assume that it's the same for origin of all the world, let that yeah. go, and let it set all the container. Yeah. And the thing is, like, draw the container the furthest point as M. Oh, I see, I see. At one point, therefore, the container. I'm going to go to the end. In that case, it means I may see some of the graphs. Right. Some of the graphs. Some of the experimental graphs. Yes, sure. But with F ray, we're basically moving this uh, dotted line a bit further, right? That's using F ray because we are uh, speeding up the system on the velocity of the component. And that's my explanation of it. I don't think that's going that way. F ray is just doing it. Our time is up. Thank you so much. You have one minute. Okay, uh, firstly, we try to connect the quantitative theory with the qualitative theory, explain a bit those errors, forces, uh, and velocities to have some insights to why this rotation and contradiction occur and how is it connected to the uh, equations. And we find out that basically there was no uh, concluding um, the theoretical, theoretical approach. Uh, further, we talked a bit about the Really great show how is it connected to stiffness and stiff and stiff conditions, and we basically agree that using a really great show might be a bit more better to, to imagination. However, even stiff stiff and stiff conditions seem to be a good explanation of the phenomena. And uh, at the beginning, we tried to explain a bit the anchoring because my opinion was hard to fit from the implementation. I, I still agree that since the endpoint is just speeded up on the angular velocity of the container, uh, instead of instead of the the pause on the light ray, it should be moving up the axis, and it should be an idea for the presentation to uh, see this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we know that the ball, the ball also gained a momentum from friction from the bottom 
of the uh, bottom of the container is friction, without friction a relevant parameter. What's for the container? Yes. It might be that's relevant. Okay. Uh, what, what, what in your opinion is the strongest aspect of the presentation of the report? Uh, I would say that uh, experimental part and maybe the fact that he showed the images and he made it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and ask about the different uh, frame of reference. 
Uh, I think it's, it was a uh, pretty bit complicated, this frame of reference, uh, every, every single thing rotating. So that uh, was very nice in our opinion, just to clarify the situation and end with her opinion. But uh, he said that the Philip uh, ratio determines the phenomenon. Uh, it wasn't clearly stated, of course, it's a lot of friction. Uh, also, not mentioning kind of critical predictions. We wanted to know how to predict the things. And we, we unfortunately couldn't uh, hear that. Uh, also, uh, did it recognize the equation? And uh, did it ask about the uh, role of this equation? Because I, I had an impression that there is a lot of equations, a lot of numbers and uh, letters, but we don't have conclusions from it, and we wanted to see what does mean. The, the reporter didn't ask for that. Uh, let's go to the discussion. Uh, the first right topic in the discussion was what was the phenomenon. A uh, reporter just said that the slip, the slipping condition, uh, when we have slip, no slip condition, it determines the phenomenon. Uh, opponent did say the spinning ratio, and uh, we think that depends on the regime, we cannot simply set this one or uh, another thing, uh, so it's much more, much more complex on one or the other state. Uh, second was, uh, of course, uh, it was a contradiction. A reporter did say this uh, friction, opponent did say the uh, uh, reaction force between both balls. It, it's connected, but we cannot say uh, clearly is it one or another, so that it could be a good collaborator. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so there's the point to open it. Okay, I mean, that to open it did not understand my demonstration at all, and then we could not have a um, reasonable discussion because she asked me about whether did that either already answered in a report or is it irrelevant of what I did. I, I have stated more reports like that. The explanation of this phenomenon is about the slip and also the incarnation. And as a report and how return, I have investigated the contributions. And the point to the reviewer, I think you are for a hundred years of misunderstanding, especially in my experiment part. You are stating in the presentation that that's only the model we use to show the demonstration, but that's not true. I have, we have investigated many part and many frame of reference with many model of perspective, and also discuss it and also provide a sufficient conclusion to it. Again, I would like to give a further remark that the interaction, the interaction in this phenomenon changes depending on the numbers of all, and therefore it is impossible or nearly impossible to form a model that can describe every interaction precisely. According to my slip and loss slip explanation, I mean that is already sufficient to walk and find one of the model for my simple for expert article uh, and model is for the larger model by considering only these parts in contact with the container. I mean, we have, we have been able to uh, explain the phenomenon and we have already varied over six parameters in digitality and investigated, which I believe that we have already completed the problem statement. Thank you very much. And now, questions of the jury. Gorgi, please. Maybe Max. Max, 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 Max. Yeah. Uh, my, fa my, my first question is to the reporter. Uh, so, uh, like, there was lots of mention of simulations. Uh, uh, like, did you, to, did you write the simulations yourself? And if you did, like, uh, can you show me, like, what formula and physics was used into the simulations? And I stated this we all or this property is on my uh, researcher named me. Like it is on the Okay, so the purpose of it is to um, describe the fact that when there is uh, when there is like um, absent of the interparty cooperation and when there is absent of the particle and the wall friction. Okay, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Luis? For the reporter, uh, when you mention friction, it, it for you is static friction or kinetic friction? Kinetic friction. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, come on. Okay. Let me go to slide 18. Yeah. Where is friction? <laughs> Where is friction? I mean, this is not a force model. This is actually just a kinematic model that describes the velocity of the particle. Friction will be in force analysis, which we have provided by the um, slide before it. No, no, slide before. Okay. Oh, this, this one. Okay. I don't know the time. Go to the technical picture is there. Go to the slide 18 again, please. Eight. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. The slide you were on before. Okay. Uh, well, what's the velocity of the contact point in case of rolling? What is the velocity of the contact point in case of rolling? 
in case of rolling or is it that one? Uh, is, 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 is it slipping or not slipping? Like just the rolling, in, in case of rolling, what's the rolling? Well, if, if it's rolling but it's slipping, then it is, it, it is important to me. Is that does it have a numerical value? Pardon? Does it have a numerical value? No. I mean, it has a numerical value and the direction. Okay, but thank you. you. Like, if you can say, if you want. Okay. I would like to imagine the velocity of the liquid is zero and then also that it push I also agree with the argument. I think it's zero. Okay, further questions from two members? Okay, sign up. Yes, I have a question for you. Uh, you said that the uh, energy situation was not uh, studied. Uh, why do you mean uh, it is uh, studied? Because the uh, uh, motor okay. uh, behind the new energy and the uh, situation is. Uh, How about the situation? Why is it necessary? Uh, this situation is necessary. Why? Why do you uh, so I think when the walls are uh, colliding with each other, they dissipate energy. So not all, not all, that, not all of the energy goes into the uh, friction war, and, and the friction is important because it uh, causes the, uh, all the cluster of the walls to flange. So when the uh, energy is split, uh, I think uh, the uh, uh, needed uh, number of needed volts fundamental to occur will actually be bigger than we, we've done last year. But the last year, yes. Okay, okay. In, in addition to the review, I would say that our work, we have done an observer experiment to perform no integration. Therefore, I think that we can assume an elastic model of collision and therefore there's no dissipation of energy, like or significantly. Okay, thank you. So come. You mentioned about the uh, relative frequencies of and then and what and that is so one of the things that we have done. Do you have some um, physical background? Uh, why this is happening? Uh, you mentioned that the uh, relative velocity from the bar to the container are uh, uh, critical parameters for this uh, question. Uh -huh. And can you explain this phenomenon sharply? What is the reason? So, um, actually, when when it's when it gives the slide about the uh, comparison between uh, the city and the local model, as you can see, uh, when it, when they try to slip, it was just um, the the contact velocity is is not the same place like this anymore. It is shift. Okay. Can you play the video? Okay, very quickly. Is this liquid some sort of resonance frequency or something? What frequency? Resonance. Wait, oh, no, not resonance frequency. So for me, in the snake mode, mm -hmm. what, what does the boss of the body is going or do they sit in the city? They are rolling the city. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the time for the jury questions is over, so thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs>
It seems that we can start with showing our scores. So please turn on your devices. So we can start showing our score. I'm going to start for myself. Okay. Then just a sec. Please show your scores for the uh, reporter. It's a six. Eight, four, eight, eight, and seven. Could you give order for those scores? And now the scores for the opposition. It's a seven, 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 eight, nine, and six. And final, and finally, and finally, can you, yeah? Scores for the review, it's an 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, and 5. Pretty big variety for the report. Uh, I would like to ask your first for the low score. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I have many things to point out as a reporter. Uh, but first of all, like, uh, the low score is uh, mainly due to the uh, of, uh, theoretical model which the reporter and the opponent pointed out. Uh, so, that is uh, my main problem. Like, you, you could have at least try to uh, do some simplified theoretical models that at least quantitatively uh, like explain some basic phenomenon. I understand that in this case it is hard, but uh, still it's a time note. Uh, so like, I, I gave you minus point, minus open terms by for my uh, question to you uh, about the low encryption. Uh, about the low encryption, about the, the compact velocity uh, in case of rolling. Uh, and like uh, in the four also like uh, I gave you in this presentation six uh, and six five and uh, I, I think like the final is a uh, like higher expectation of the presentation. Uh, but I agree with this. Okay, thank you. Then a uh, higher score from Mr. Kamal. Raden or Sparos, Bratislav, which one of you would like? Please. Uh, my partial grade was a uh, 5 for the report uh, and 1.75 for the discussion. I, I like all the experimental part. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, the theoretical part and the comparison with the experimental part is uh, with problems. Uh, I don't like a lot. Thank you very much. Then for the opposition, uh, lower score, uh, Professor Sola. Yeah, I gave uh, one for questions and uh, for opposition uh, to two, and uh, discussion with the other two. Actually, you did uh, start very well, but then uh, uh, you might in my opinion was I was uh, asking questions on the interview to Okay, thank you. Then the highest score from Sonisa. Yeah. Yes, uh, I need uh, two points uh, for the questions, uh, three uh, points for the uh, political speech, and two points for the uh, discussion. The discussion was uh, very well, uh, um, the organization was uh, okay, and uh, I think uh, it was uh, uh, a bit aggressive, but uh, not, not more. Uh, it was a very well discussion. Thank you. I would like to ask you to tell the partial grades because, because 
students have and readings later on that these are the qualified in vaccination. Thank you. Uh, then, uh, lowest score for the review, Professor Sokin again. Yeah, again. Uh, it's great, but nothing necessary much in the partial score. Okay. Uh, we are a question about some more. Yeah. And uh, a review of the board was uh, somehow okay, but uh, you, you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you spent very few time on the review of the opposition and discussion and analysis, particularly, you know, there was no time, particularly, you should have. Uh, discuss what what was uh, missing <coughs> in the uh, uh, conversation. Okay, thank you. Then, maybe Luis with a nine. Yes, I, I like a lot the the review part. Uh, I think you point out uh, the the very uh, the essential parts of the forum and the, the part of the reporter and the comment. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, I just want to tell you this uh, report, but I know also like in general, so like this is the final, uh, and like there are no other, this is like no other rooms, so like the post-graduation team is like, has a different expectation sort of, and the, uh, like the first round grades are not like the report you see, it's like we, we give grades in the second round compared to what we get in the past, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's 10.16. I would like to start at 10.26, so I would like to ask everyone who wants to participate in the fight in any way, please be back right on time. Thank you very much for the first stage.